Greetings, friends. Have you ever looked at a Sudoku and wondered which two to three cells do I need to focus on in order to crack this puzzle? Well, I'm going to show you the three most important cells in this classic by Oddish and what expert Sudoku tips and tricks you need to solve them. The last one is the trickiest. I'll also give you some more fun facts about my Friday featured setter. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, the three most important cells we got to focus on here. Row nine, column two. It can be a one, two, three, six, or nine. Doesn't look like that important, but it will be. Row eight, column one. It could be four, six, one, four, six, seven, nine. And then let's look over here at row one, column nine. Okay, what can this be? Two, three, six, and a nine. This is what we need to focus on. If we can figure out these three cells, the puzzle gets a little bit easier. So how do we do that? Well, first we're going to start with some cross hatching. You got these two fours and these two fours. So we can solve for four right here. And now with these two fives, we can solve for five right there. Pretty easy. And then if you look across row six, you notice you just need a one and a nine. I have a one right here. So that's gotta be your nine. That's gotta be your one. Another easy cross hatch, you got these two sevens, means this has to be a seven. Okay, what Otis put in here and what you need to notice next is the fact that we got these little tuples, they called, right? What can these two cells be? So it can be a six or a nine. What can these three cells be? It can be a one, six, or a nine. We can trim that up a little bit. And we can get rid of the nine right there. And then what can these three cells be? one six or nine so they're very related there's lots of one sixes and nines so we can get rid of the one right there so now let's see what we can do to start trimming some cannons away hopefully you see right away with this one you can eliminate a one from right there okay that's cool but i really want to focus on this cell first row nine column two how can we get rid of some of these candidates right we want to eliminate those candidates and whatever remains has to be the solution well first you notice that the ones are limited in block eight to row nine. And so that makes them a pointing pair. And so what I just added is called center notation. Anytime a three by three block, you get two possibilities for a candidate. You mark it in case you solve one cell, you can solve the other right away. But since the ones have to be in block eight somewhere and limited to this row, they cannot be anywhere else along the row. So we eliminate a one from right there. Okay, that's helpful. Now, what can we do about this Two. Well, we'll come back to the two. What can we do about the three? Let's see where the threes are in this puzzle. Okay, we got threes here. Got threes there. Threes can be there. There are a lot of threes given. And of course, we can put threes here. Let's color this up. And what you'll notice is that in row three, the threes are limited to two spots. And in row seven, they're also limited two spots. And it happens to be the same two columns, column two and column eight. So if you put a three here, then these cells couldn't be a three. You have to have a three right there, right? Conversely, if this is not a three, then this cell has to be a three. These can't be threes, and you have to put a three right there. So hopefully you notice that threes are gonna be here and here here and here. Otherwise, what we look at is here and here and cross over here and here. So what we have is a Sudoku X-Wing. And so since the threes have to be one of these orange cells in those columns, we can eliminate a three from every other cell in the column. You know, if I tried to put a three right here, the problem would be is that neither one of those cells could be threes, right? And then where would you put a three in row three and row seven? Well, they both have to be in column eight. Both these cells would have to be threes. We can't have that. That's going to break the puzzle. That's why we know we can eliminate a three from this cell right there. 
And so we can eliminate the three, and now we have just a two, six, nine. I can eliminate threes from these cells as well. I don't need it for this part of the solve, so I'm not going to do it. But feel free to do that. And then share this puzzle with somebody you know. See if they find this X-Wing or how they get about solving it. And ask them to subscribe to Smart Hobbies, and they can solve Sudoku X-Wings even better. Okay, let's get rid of all those colors. Now, what can we do about the six? This is interesting, and this, I think, is the key strategy that Audish put in here in the way he designed this grid. What you'll notice is if you look at these two cells, you might notice that the six only has two places in column four. It's either here or here. And then in a row five, the six has two places, either here or here. These are called conjugate pairs. And this is the conjugate pair. And this is very popular. Simon Anthony talks about these being critical to solve advanced strategies, to, is to identify these pairs. If this is either a six, which is great, and any cell that sees it cannot be a six. If it's not a six, the conjugate pair has to be. So this cell would have to be a six, which eliminates a six from the rest of the block, including this one, and forces a six down here. So either a six is here, or a six is here, and you can eliminate any six from any cell that sees both of them and since they both see this cell right here you can eliminate a six from right there this is called a sudoku two string kite you see how the front of the kite's kind of here in the block and then the tails down there uh, comes up quite a bit and it's a very powerful strategy for eliminating candidates from cells like this okay so that's how the six helped us out and now we got it down to the nine or the two. One of those has got to go. Well, let's look at the nines. All right. If you look right here, you might notice row five. Only two places for a nine. Conjugate pair. And now up here, these two cells, that's a five or six. Can't be a nine because of the nine there. So where can the other nine be in column six? It can be right here. And so what we have here. Is another two string kite, right? Either a nine's here, if it's not there, it has to be here, blocks that nine out, puts a nine right there. Anywhere we dice it, a nine's gotta be on one of these orange cells. So we eliminate the nine from right there. Okay, so we just did a big survivor of the cells, and in row nine, column two, what we end up with is a two. If you wanna solve Sudoku puzzles using two strings of kites even better, check out my tutorial. Because you got the two right there. This is huge for us. And before we move on to the next advanced strategy and the next key cell here, I do want to share my fun fact about Oddish. I asked Oddish, how do you come up with the names of your puzzles? And Oddish said he usually names a puzzle after what it looks like, either in the given clues or what the board coloring looks like after completing the puzzle. He also thinks it's fine to give out some solving clues in the puzzle title, even though some people think that's a little controversial. Well, nice plus one. Maybe you thought it looked like a snowflake. I don't know. I think the plus one is a clue to those two two-string kites and the strategy that's going to help us solve this next cell. Thank you so much. Great puzzle here. Uh, I got to test some variations of it, and I really, really appreciate that oddish. Thank you. Okay, so how can we make some eliminations here? Well, we're going to use a lot of these same cells that we were just focused on. I'm going to use a little bit different technique. There's two ways to do it. You might notice we have four cells of the same by value so a candidates, six and nine. So four BVCs. All right, even amount. We use some coloring. We can go, okay, one of these, you know, this cell either has to be a six or a nine. This has to be the opposite. So if that's a six, that's a nine. So we're going to color it a different color. But since this is the opposite, it forces the same value right here in the blue so whatever this is this also has to be the same value which forces the opposite right there so what we know is that the oranges have to be the same the blues have to be the same and what we can infer is that whatever you see the orange and blue whatever cell they see you can eliminate both right because what would happen if we try to put a six right here put a six here that's a nine that's a six that's a nine, and it would force a six right here. And we already have a six. That can't happen. So we know that can't be a six. 
you put a nine right there, it's going to do the same thing. So we know by using this coloring, we can eliminate a six and a nine from right there. Also called a Sudoku remote pair. If you want to solve Sudokus better using multicoloring like I just did, check out this tutorial. But what it did is now gave us only two candidates. So we got two survivors here, four or seven. Which one is the value? And I'm about to show you how we get there. We can actually get there now without any advanced strategies. We just need to look at what we did with our previous solve. We got a two here, two here, and this two means we can solve for two up there. Okay, and then with these ones and this one, we can solve for one right here. And with these two ones and this one, we can solve for one there. Okay, great. Now, where can the sevens be? All right, we got two sevens here. Only place left for a seven, block one's right there. All right, and with these two sevens and this seven, you can lock for a seven right there. And guess what? Since we have a seven here and here, this can no longer be a seven. So we can solve the second most important cell for a four. All right, so now we solve the two, we solve the four, and we still have this cell, right? I said this is also critical. And this is the trickiest one. So don't go away. Don't think, okay, it's cracked. We got everything knocked out here. Nope, we got some more great solving here. But we have made so much progress. Okay, where do we go? We just solved all of these extra digits. We can actually solve for uh, two a little bit more here. We got these twos. Means where can a two be here in column seven? Well, it can't be here and here because of these twos. And it can't be here because of this two. So you can solve for two right there, which will allow us now with these two fives and this five to solve for a five right here. Okay. And then with this nine, we can solve for a six here. We can solve for a nine here. And now we can unravel this remote pair. We actually know this is a six, that's a nine, and that's the six. So like you see, the six and nine here could be a six or nine right there. Okay. And now with uh, we can keep on going here, right? Because of the nine here, or because of the six here, this is a one, which puts a nine right there. And now with the one and the nine, this is your six, and that's your one. Figured out all of those great cells there. Okay, where do we go from here? Where we go is now that next tricky strategy. First, let's look at where the nines can be okay nines can be here they can be there they can be here and they can be here okay now if you look here you might notice row one and row eight nine that the nines are in the same column they're in the same columns right column one and column eight i actually noticed this first columns three and seven, but it's gonna have the same result. All right, in columns three and seven, the nines are limited to the same two rows, rows three and seven. And what that means, and I already showed you with the X-wing is that a nine's gotta be here and here, or here and here, which is gonna bump out every other nine across the row. So we're gonna eliminate a nine from this cell, leaves just a three and a six, and we can eliminate, a nine from this cell which leaves just a three and an eight You're like what's the big deal Tim? like why are you showing us to solve here you said we had to solve the cell up there i'm about to show you if you want to solve sudoku x-wings even better check out this tutorial i'm here to help you with all your sudoku tutorial needs all right let's eliminate all that something else we can do we actually did make some progress once you put that six right there we know that this cannot be a six and I put a 3-6 here, you're like, what's the big deal, Timberlake? Well, let's look at some pairs. we got two cells remaining over here. This can be either a 3 or a 9. And we got two cells remaining in column 3. It can be a 6 or a 9. This is what the big deal is. Okay? And we got a 9 right here. We can eliminate a 9 from right there. All right, we're down to 2 or 3. got survivor mode. What's it going to be? The big deal. This is a pivot. It's got a pair, BBC, six and nine. See this cell. It's got a three and a nine, all right? 
So that's another pair, shared candidate. If we look over here, another pair with shared candidates. All right, so we got three six here, three nine here, six nine here. So we have all three possibilities, paired possibilities of three six and nine. One of those cells sees the other two. So that's our pivot. These are the pinchers. If this is a six, then that would be a three. If this is a nine, that would be a three. So what we know is any cell that sees the two orange, we can eliminate a three. Guess what? We can eliminate a three from this cell and it ends up being a two. And so what we did here is an X, Y wing. Check out this tutorial. If you want to solve X, Y wings even better and find them. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies. You won't miss any new content. If you want to get some great solving in, check out my pinned comment. Join the Smarty Party. Get my latest Sudoku puzzle pack for members only. All right, we got this. This is a two. This is huge. Now, we're not quite done, though. We got more solving to do here, but we did take care of the three most critical cells that I call them. If you thought another cell was more important, put in the comments. I want to hear about it. All right. And if you got this far and you're solving, congratulations. You are really good at solving Sudoku. And I'm glad that you know some of these great expert Sudoku type tick tips and tricks. What this two does to us is since we have a two A here, is it makes this cell an eight, makes this a two. And then what we have left is a three and a four. I got a three here. So here's a four. And this is going to be three in the corner. Yeah, there's three in the corner for us. All right. Which gives us an eight right there. Gives us a nine right here. And guess what? We get a second three in the corner. Yes, look at that. I love it. Okay, what do we have here to finish row nine? We need a four. What do we have to finish block nine? We need a nine, which means this is going to be the six, and that's going to be the nine. All right, and what we need right here, it looks like we need a three. Okay, we need a five and six right there. Let's figure that out by going over here in a column seven. We're getting close. We need a five or an eight. I got an eight here, which means this is an eight. This is a five, which puts the five up here in the six right here. Now we can disambiguate this pair. I'm putting the six here, the five there. And with this six means this is a three. Awesome. And then this has to be a six. One of the hands we've been working with this whole puzzle. And the last digit has to be a nine. Check out this video to see some more expert Sudoku tips and tricks. Please consider supporting me through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I want to thank Oddish for being my Friday featured setup. This is a joy to solve, and thank you so much for watching.